abandonment of the first row. Yes, this is a calamity that continues to puzzle the Muslims until today. Even though the Prophet had said, خَيْرُ صُفُوفِ الرِّجَالِ أَوَّلُهَا وَشَرُّهَا آخِرُهَا the best of rows for the men are the front ones and the most evil, not that they're no good, but in comparison to the front ones, the worst are the back ones. The row or the first row. Let me give you some narrations because many people don't know this. Hadith number one, number two now. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَوْ أَنَّ النَّاسَ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا فِي النِّدَاءِ وَالصَّفِّ الْأَوَّلِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَجِدُوا إِلَّا أَنْ يَسْتَهِمُوا عَلَيْهِ if the people only knew what kind of reward was waiting for them for calling the adhan and nida calling the adhan and the first row and they had no choice but to draw lots they would have done so meaning we all come to the masjid huh five brothers and there's one one empty space and now if we were to see who will get it if the only way we could do so is by drawing lots, we get a bucket, put our names, Muhammad, Ahmed, Ali, Al Akhri, right? And we pick our name, and this is my name, Alhamdulillah, this is my spot. If this is what we were supposed to do, then Muslims would have done so. If they knew what kind of reward was waiting for them. But do you see anyone doing this today? No? I, I've seen, Wallahi, I've seen amazing things. A brother who comes to the masjid early, and he sits all the way in the back. I told him, Ya Akhi, you have to enjoy what is good, forbid what is evil. This is not a joke. Akhi, Barakallah Fiq. Allah blessed you with the ability to come early to the masjid. Would you, why don't you go sit in the front in the nicest way possible? The brother wouldn't listen. Akhi, he remained sitting in his place until the iqama was called. People are standing in rows. I'm looking back at him. He's still looking at me like, I don't care. You think, is this is someone who's rational? Is this someone who believes? Ya Habibi, Allah bless you, someone advising you. Giving you an opportunity to get reward. And people have zuhd. You know what is zuhd? Carelessness. They are ascetic concerning reward. The first row is calling them, and people don't like to pray in it. They deliberately go to some corner in the masjid to pray. And the Prophet ﷺ had told us that if they knew what was waiting for them, they would, have, they would draw lots, so they may occupy that spot. Furthermore, Sufyan al thawri used to say, لا تكن مثل عبد السوء لا يأتي حتى يدعى اأتي الصلاة قبل النداء. In order to get the first row, you need to go early. He said, do not be like the wicked slave. He does not come to the salah until he is called, invited. Come to the salah before the call is made. Don't wait for someone to invite you. Show up on your own. If you were to go early, just, just think about it. Go early once, brother. You walk into the masjid with tranquility. You pray tahiyyat al-masjid. This is a reward for you inshallah. Or the sunan which will come before. You sit down. Now as long as you are sitting down, angels are asking Allah to have mercy on you and to forgive you. You recite the Quran, then you get in the reward of the recitation of the Quran. You do some dhikr, then that. You seek some knowledge, then that. While you are being given the reward of being in the state of salah. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, وَلَا يَزَالُ فِي صَلَاءٍ مَا يَنْتَظِرُ الصَّلَاءِ He will remain, أو كما قال عيسى صلى الله عليه وسلم, He will remain in the state of praying as long as he's waiting for the salah. All of this reward and the first row to go early. On the other hand, coming late is exactly the opposite. And we've mentioned this before. You're coming in, you're rushing, you're breathing hard, you barely made it, you don't know what's going on. They're not the same. They're not the same in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is the, the acceptable part. Sayyid ibn al-Musayyib said, مَا أَذَّنَ الْمُؤَذِّنْ مُنْدُ ثَلَاثِينَ سَنَةً إِلَّا وَأَنَا فِي الْمَسْجِدِ And they said, uh, Sayyid ibn al-Musayyib said, the, the Mu'adhin did not call the Adhan since the last 30 years, except that I was in the masjid. 30 years. You know how many days that is? He was at the masjid. For every salah, for every salah, the Mu'adhin never called the Adhan except that Sayyid ibn al-Musayyib, among the greatest ulama of the tabi'een, was in the masjid. They said about him that he never, he said about himself that he never saw the behind of a man in front of him because he was never in the second row. 
He never got to pray behind someone. I mean, if you want to avoid the stinky smell of the carpet, and then you have to pray in the first row. This is among the virtues of the first row. is the fact that you smell nothing but fresh carpet. But the people who pray in the back, they get all kinds of smell. Depending on the worker which was praying in front of you or earlier, then this is the kind of smell which you will get during your sujood. So if you want to avoid this kind of, you know, discomfort, then upon you is the first row. The evidences and the rewards are too many to enumerate. It is enough that the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith in Abu Dawood, which is authenticated by Shaykh Al-Albani, لا يزال قوم يتأخرون عن الصف الأول حتى يؤخرهم الله في النار. نسأل الله العافية. People will remain to be negligent concerning the first row until Allah will cause them to be delayed in the hellfire. It's not, it's not a joke, this issue of the first row. This is an indication that the person is a believer. This is an indication that he loves the salah. It has many, many uh, elements which Allah Azza wa Jal had made in the salah. We ask Allah to make us among them. But brothers, we are able to be among them. It is not mission impossible. It is not discovering any, any you know, new thing in this world. It is a simple matter. Just 15 minutes. Give ourselves 15 minutes extra for the salah. Don't wait for the adhan to be called. Don't wait till the last moment before you do things. Prepare for the salah before the time of the salah. Prepare for the salah before the time of the salah. This is what is expected of us. You see what I'm saying? So why don't we do this? What is holding us back? The shaitan. Who will get us busy at the last moment. We need to stop each one of us here. From now on, since we are living in a country, alhamdulillah, where you are given the right to pray in the masjid, you are given the right to, at the time of salah, to, you're supposed to close down the shop. Isn't it supposed to be the case, whether people do it or not, this is not a, none of our business, but we have this privilege that no one can take away. Why? In the land of disbelievers, people have an agreement with the, with the company that you will allow me to pray in the masjid, that my lunch break will be at salah time, and they will drive 30 minutes to pray in the jama'ah. And we are here next door, and some of us could care less. What is it an indication of? That our hearts are not sound. There's a problem. So we don't want to abandon the first row ever again. As long as we are able to pray in the first row, we should pray in the first row. This is the position, this is the location, which will bring about Allah's pleasure bi Azza wa Jal. The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah blesses the first row and the right side of the rows. It's blessed by Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal will mention them among those who are closest to Him. Those who pray in the first row. These are the people that understand. <laughs> فرحين بما آتاهم الله من فضله ويستبشرون بالذين لم يلحقوا بهم من خلفهم ألا ألا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون